Hi, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining my talk at the OpenSUSE conference. In this talk, I'm going to be covering Linux and Kubernetes innovations at SUSE. I'm Shen Liang, President of Engineering and Innovation at SUSE. I joined SUSE last year with the acquisition of Rancher, where I was the co-founder and CEO. Since this is a uh, open SUSE conference, all of you guys are intimately familiar with Linux. Uh, many of you might be familiar with Kubernetes as well. And Linux and Kubernetes uh, really go hand in hand. They cannot be separated. For the purpose of this talk, it would be impossible for me to cover everything that's going on at SUSE in a mere you know, 20, 30 minutes. So I have a, I'm going to focus most of my attention on Kubernetes and on, in fact, on a specific project uh, that we're doing called Harvester that marries a lot of strength of Kubernetes with Linux and Linux virtualization. But I'll give you a general context of Kubernetes as well. And toward the end, I'm also going to give you a very quick overview of some of the other open source initiatives, uh, innovative projects, really exciting stuff uh, that's going on at SUSE. Hopefully, your, that will give you uh, uh, some idea and it would interest some of you to look into and perhaps even participate in some of those projects. First of all, why Kubernetes? Why is Kubernetes so important? Because Kubernetes is everywhere. Kubernetes is practically going wherever Linux goes. And as we know, Linux is everywhere. Linux runs on developer laptop. It runs in corporate data centers. It runs in the cloud. It runs in branch offices, powering both you know, the back office as well as uh, in some cases, say front office cache registers. And Linux uh, is very popular in edge and embedded environments. And Kubernetes is going to all of these places as well. Um, for example, uh, developers use uh, platforms like Minikube or Docker Desktop, which has long since uh, embedded a Kubernetes runtime. And more recently, there's a project that uh, we're, we've been working on called Rancher Desktop that brings extremely easy to use experience for get developers access to Kubernetes. Uh, in the enterprise data center, there are many, many Kubernetes distros uh, that will enable uh, companies to set up Kubernetes clusters either on bare metal servers or on vSphere or Newtonix clusters. Uh, RKE, that's a product from an open source project from SUSE. Uh, OpenShift, that's a project from a competitor of SUSE. So those are probably the best known. Uh, in the cloud, uh, Kubernetes services are table states today. Amazon EKS, uh, Google GKE, Azure AKS, uh, those allow you to run Kubernetes practically for free. Uh, you still pay for the underlying uh, you know, uh, compute infrastructure that's needed to run your Kubernetes workload. But these cloud providers have pretty much decided to use Kubernetes as, a, a, you know, as almost a draw, as a loss leader, to draw as much workload as possible uh, into their cloud. Last but not the least, projects like uh, K3S and some of the other projects from other vendors in the space, but K3S is no doubt uh, the de facto industry standard that has brought uh, Kubernetes from you know, the proven data center and cloud use cases to Raspberry Pi, surveillance cameras, automobiles, energy platforms, uh, branch offices, so all the edge and branch use cases for Kubernetes today are primarily powered by technologies like K3S. So with all of these technologies, Kubernetes is, uh, is going anywhere that Linux goes. Um, 
a fundamental reason why Kubernetes is so important is because just like Linux, it enables a common compute platform across any infrastructure. By infrastructure, I mean developer desktop, data center, cloud, you know, branch machines and, and, and edge and embedded devices. And the, the, the difference between Linux and Kubernetes is while Linux uh, typically you know, provides the essential operating systems services required to run applications on one server, uh, of course, we also have Linux clustering, but, but, but that aside, I mean, operating system primarily manages resources and run applications on one computer. Uh, Kubernetes provides uh, an added set of features, very much complementary to the base Linux operating system. So it enables a massively scalable and microservices structured application that can run on a cluster. And in some cases, you know, upwards of tens, hundreds, thousands, or even tens of thousands of machines. And, and, and these are some of the capabilities uh, I listed here on the slide should be very familiar to you. You know, Kubernetes bias, implementing Kubernetes, all these compute platforms can implement a common API and packaging standard. It can perform health checks and HA for applications. It implements or integrates with load balancing. Uh, it integrates with networking or implement a basic form of overlay networking. It allows you to apply network security policies to keep your application secure. It allows you to implement backup and recovery uh, uh, practices for both your applications, as well as the infrastructure services used to run the applications. It allows you to automatically scale up and scale down uh, the infrastructure that's required to run the application based on the workload demand. And it performs service discovery across multiple microservices. And it provides, finally it provides you know, the, the, the networking as well as rule-based uh, access control for uh, running your application securely. So this, you get it out of the box for Kubernetes. And that's why Kubernetes is going everywhere. All of these uh, capabilities, as you can imagine, are essential for developing modern applications. And SUSE product, uh, SUSE has a very uh, coherent and established product line that serves the exact needs of these modern enterprises looking to either modernize their traditional workload or develop new cloud native workload uh, for the future. And, and SUSE products are designed to run across the hybrid, any form of hybrid cross cloud infrastructure uh, with uh, Linux serving as the SUSE Linux serving as the, which is based on open SUSE, of course, as all of us know, as the uh, uh, Linux computing uh, product family and Kubernetes uh, that is covered by our Rancher product family. And uh, the, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna get too much into details of the Linux product family. You all know about that. Uh, and, and Rancher is fundamentally a platform for managing all of world's Kubernetes distros. Some of these Kubernetes distros are created by SUSE like RKE and K3S. Some Kubernetes distros may be created by the cloud providers like GKE and AKS and EKS. Uh, SUSE also develops and supports uh, container storage technologies like Longhorn. So together, the Rancher product family and the SUSE Linux enterprise product family form the foundation of the modern IT stack. And that's where hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of customers rely on this software stack every day to power their mission critical workload. So with that as the basis, with Kubernetes now achieving clear mainstream adoption, what are some of the innovative technologies we can still develop from here? So I'll start with one. And then I'll, uh, uh, I'll briefly talk about some of the other projects that we're also working on. So a particularly interesting project uh, uh, actually lies in the area of data center. So as, as, we, as we know, uh, the data center industry has gone through tremendous amount of transformation uh, in the last few years. 
uh, a lot of the growth of the traditional data center nowadays is actually happening in the cloud, but that doesn't mean enterprises do not in, continue to invest in the data center. In fact, uh, companies like VMware and Nutanix, as in particular, are seeing tremendous amount of growth uh, with their private cloud offerings. And these days, the private cloud offering is no longer uh, uh, um, implemented using technologies like OpenStack. They are increasingly implemented using a piece of technology called hyper-converged infrastructure. So let's first talk about that. Um, uh, at SUSE, we have an innovative project open source project called Harvester, which is open source hyper-converged infrastructure. And uh, how is this new open source hyper-converged infrastructure uh, Harvester different from the HCI or hyper-converged infrastructure we all know today, which we call the traditional hyper-converged infrastructure, or we call HCI 1.0. So HCI 1.0 that's you know, represented by vendors like VMware and Nutanix is very well established. It's a great product. HCI is great because it greatly simplifies how data center can be managed and consumed. It integrates uh, networking, storage, and virtualization as a turnkey uh, software appliance experience, all supported behind a API, a coherent API and UI. So it's essentially data center in a box, you know, as, a, as, the, as the founder of Nutanix used to call it, it's like data center shipped as an iPhone. So internally, you might be using KVM or v VMware or particular type of NAS or SAN technology, but the customer doesn't care. All he cares about is through an API, which is typically proprietary, or and the UI to deploy uh, you know, these applications. Typically, these are traditional applications, but modern applications work as well. So HCI 1.0 is data center in a box. Um, we believe HCI is ripe for open source adopt, uh, disruption. As of right now, there's really no uh, a clear, viable open source alternative to hyper-converged infrastructure. So just like Linux disrupted you know, the, the, the world of Windows and Solaris and HPUX, uh, we believe um, H, uh, HCI is ripe for dis disruption as well. And it's, 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 it's not just open source, but the technology itself is also under uh, a, a great deal of change. Uh, the, one of the big changes now we have Kubernetes so that we can conceivably build a hyper-converged infrastructure experience that doesn't uh, rely on proprietary API, but build on the industry standard Kubernetes API. And then by, also by building on Kubernetes API, we get the ability for the hyper-converged infrastructure to manage both containers and virtual machines. And that is how we believe we can modernize uh, uh, hyper-converged infrastructure and turn HCI 1.0 to HCI 2.0. And uh, one of the great things about uh, uh, it, of HCI 2.0 project like Harvester is by leveraging Kubernetes, we can and uh, we can seamlessly extend the same experience from on-premise data center to the edge and cloud. Why? Because as I said, if Project Harvester is built on Kubernetes and Kubernetes API is everywhere. So with a platform like Rancher who can manage which can manage any type of Kubernetes clusters, Rancher can help tie together Project Harvester with you know, proprietary cloud services like AKS, GKE, and EKS that runs in the cloud, and then truly provide a hybrid cloud experience, a consistent, coherent hybrid cloud experience for the enterprise so that they can deploy these applications seamlessly, whatever infrastructure they choose to run. Uh, you know, Harvester is built on not just one technology, but it's built on a pretty large collection of cloud native technologies, many of which are built by Rancher, Asusa, and Rancher, but some of them are not. 
Uh, so it uses the longhorn storage technology. It uses Kubert virtualization wrapper. It uses KVM as the fundamental uh, uh, hypervisor technology. Of course, it uses Kubernetes as the overall orchestration framework. Then it uses networking uh, uh, plugins uh, like Maltus, which is a plugin, CNI plugin to Kubernetes. And at the end, you get fully 100% open source HCI software, and it combines all these cloud native technologies into a single coherent API. And that being uh, uh, HCI software, of course, it's designed to run on the bare metal. Uh, it has a very uh, complete feature set. It, it, it is still in beta. It's, it's, it's targeted to GA later this year. Um, it, it, it has you know, complete VM lifecycle management, primarily built around the Kubert technology. But you don't interact with Kubert directly. Uh, you know, Hi, uh, Harvester has its own UI and API. It, uh, it has integrated distributed block storage built using Longhorn, and it, it, it relies on Maltus, and as well as VLAN networking, supports both uh, 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 software-defined networking and VLAN hardware-defined networking for, uh, for, 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 for multi-tenant uh, network management. And it has a, a built-in object store for, for managing uh, VM disk images. With Harvester, of course, everything starts from these bare metal nodes, and uh, you would install Linux. SLES or OpenSUSE works really well, and uh, it's actually with SLES, we're able to leverage the uh, Microsoft uh, Windows Server virtualization certification. So not only Linux VM, but Windows VM could also be supported. And, and as, as you know, by now, the Windows uh, uh, SLES and, uh, and OpenSUSE are now binary compatible, binary the same. So, so pretty much you can you, you know you can swap uh, uh, SLES, you can you can swap in OpenSUSE for SLES, and everything will work um, uh, uh, the same way as well. But Harvester as a as an open source project is actually OS agnostic, so it is not really just designed for OpenSUSE and SLES. It works with Rails, CentOS, uh, Ubuntu as well. Uh, and on every node will run a Longhorn, uh, run the Longhorn service as well as the Kubert service. Then uh, these virtual machines gets created on the host, uh, essentially gets created on the host operating systems, KVM. Uh, each VM can, we, you know, we can create these different networks. I think get each VM by default gets connected to a management network, which is a software defined network. And, and then you, you can also optionally have additional NICs uh, to connect these VMs to you know, hardware-based uh, VLAN networks. And, 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 and that, 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 that enables the greatest degree of control and flexibility in, in deploying these virtual machines in uh, enterprise production. Uh, now that I've uh, introduced I've introduced Project Harvester, Project Harvester is just one of many, many projects, open source innovative projects that's happening at SUSE. So I don't really have time to go through every one of these um, uh, projects in this short talk. If you want to find out more about those projects, please go to uh, suzeprojects.github.io. And I'll just quickly skim through them. Uh, I think I mentioned quickly uh, Rancher Desktop on the very first slide. A uh, Rancher desktop is basically designed to be a replacement, a more Kubernetes friendly replacement to Docker desktop. You know, as you know, Docker desktop was primarily designed to run, allow you to run Docker for developers to interact with Docker. And, and since then they've integrated Kubernetes into Docker desktop, which is great. But, but Rancher desktop is purposefully designed to run, uh, uh, let developers run Kubernetes on their desktop, and you can choose. You know, one of the great features of Rancher Desktop is you get to pick and choose whatever Kubernetes versions you want to use, and it will, will like switch for you very quickly. For developers, it's very important. Um, another project that a lot of developers use today, uh, 
is uh, in the same space is called Minikube. And Minikube is great. I mean, a lot of our developers use Minikube as well, but uh, we believe still it could be made a little bit easier to use and a little bit more user friendly and, and a little bit more powerful. And that's what Docker, uh, was, that's what Rancher Desktop is about. Harvester I already talked about, so um, it's, it's open source hyper-converged infrastructure software. I'm not gonna spend any more time here. Uh, the third project uh, on this list is called Kube Warden. It is a, uh, it is an admission control, uh, uh, admission controller uh, written uh, that allows you to write it using WebAssembly. So uh, this is very important because um, uh, Kubernetes admission controller is used to implement very sophisticated um, uh, policies and, and access control policies and uh, uh, governance policies for deploying Kubernetes in uh, secure or regulated environments. There's a, if, if you're involved in, uh, in, in some of the CNCF projects, you might have heard of a, uh, a project called OPA, Open Policy Engine. And the Open Policy Engine uses a, a, a declarative uh, a logic programming like language to, to code up uh, the policy, which is quite powerful, but that's not necessarily a language that a lot of people know how to code in. So in most cases, OPA users end up just using a few canned out of the box policies. Uh, so the great thing with Kube Warden is it's kind of works like OPA, except uh, you can code up the, uh, the policy in whatever language you want, as long as it can be compiled uh, into WebAssembly. So I'm very excited about this project looking forward to integrating it into, uh, into you know, the Rancher product someday. Uh, Hipper is, uh, you know, comes from, for, for, the, for the OpenSUSE world, it should ring a bell. It, 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 it basically come from uh, the, the idea of a Helm zipper. So the, 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 the idea is uh, uh, in, you know, in, the, in the Linux world, you have RPMs, which are uh, application packages. So Helm is the corresponding, uh, um, concept in the in the kubernetes space a lot of applications are packaged as a as, as a helm chart but helm chart typically only um only packages one application but as you know if i a lot of times if i install an application i also want to make sure its dependencies are also installed and that's where just like zipper or yum uh, takes care of dependencies between rpm packages hipper takes care of dependencies between helm packages and this is a project uh, 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 we started at SUSE since the acquisition, and it's, uh, it's going very, very well. The, the next project, Apenio, it's, a, it's, a, it's still an early stage project. It's designed to be a, 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 a modernized, simplified uh, platform as a service platform software. So as, as we all know, uh, SUSE used to be a, uh, used to have a Cloud Foundry product. And it, we've had some degree of success, but it hasn't. Cloud Foundry has, 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 has pretty much failed to, uh, uh, to take over the world as the computing platform of choice for the enterprise. And there's a big reason is it's, it's just very heavyweight, very complicated. With Kubernetes, uh, 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 the game has changed. Much of what uh, Cloud Foundry used to do and nowadays done by Kubernetes already. So what Apinio did is it took the best out of Cloud Foundry in terms of user experience, in terms of um, uh, ease of deployment, then it uh, ease of application deployment and the, the, the GitHub integration. Then it, 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 it kind of ported that, made it run on top of Kubernetes. So it's extremely lightweight and extremely easy to use. And it provides a natural upgrade path for, for folks who, you know, who, who, who were running on uh, Cloud Foundry or who are still looking for a platform as a service layer. And uh, look forward to Apinio getting mature and being productized in the near future. Next project, Opni, that is our AI ops, uh, it's AI ML driven anomaly detection, which in another word, it's AI ops. AI ops is a tremendously popular area of innovation in the industry today. Um, uh, companies nowadays are investing increasingly heavy amount of resources into DevOps, into operation IT ops, 
And uh, they, these teams, they have to deal with, you know, increasingly large amount of data, alerts, audit logs, uh, and it's the, the, the volume is such that the traditional uh, monitoring tools and, uh, and, and the manual process just simply not able to, 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 to handle. There are way too many false positives. So what a, what a project like Opni is able to do is it, it, it enables uh, these organizations to uh, it, it, using, the, using AI technology to uh, dramatically narrow down uh, the, 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 the set of anomalies that, uh, uh, that human have to, that those human operators have to look at therefore greatly reduce the workload and resource requirements for, 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 for the operations team. So we, we, you know, we've had uh, discussions with potential customers about it. It's, 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 everyone's extremely excited. It's a heavily anticipated uh, product uh, on the Rancher roadmap. Uh, then the next, uh, uh, the next three projects uh, did, not, did not come out of a rancher. They come from uh, the SUSE side, but nonetheless, uh, uh, they come from the Linux side. Extremely exciting, you know. Uh, first, uh, Sleep ECI. Uh, Sleep ECI is an alternative to Red Hat UBI, which is you know the unified based image. Uh, that's a uh, it's a base container image that's free to distribute. But the problem with Red Hat UBI is is it, it's only supported on uh, the Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux operating system, whereas uh, the, the, the Sleep ECI is, is, is built out, out of the same, you know, uh, uh, OpenSUSE and Sleep packages. It's fully supported on any Linux operating system. And again, uh, uh, that speaks to SUSE's openness to the market and our attitude toward uh, 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 given uh, users uh, choice when it comes to picking technologies at every level. Uh, Trento is a, um, is, a, is, a, is a new project that we uh, started at uh, SUSE to uh, improve the ways of uh, uh, how you deploy SAP on, on, on SLES and, and uh, on SLES operating system. It's, uh, uh, it is, uh, SAP is, is one of the you know, more complex uh, application packages uh, that uh, folks have to deploy, manage, and upgrade, and Trento make that process very easy. Uh, SAP and SUSE have a long history of collaboration. Uh, majority of SAP deployments in the world runs on, uh, runs on the SLES operating system, and Trento solidifies uh, SUSE's really, uh, leadership in that area. Last uh, but not the least, it's probably one of the you know, more earlier stage uh, 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 open source uh, software project, and it doesn't even have a logo yet. It's called Aquarium. Uh, Aquarium is our new effort to productize uh, Ceph. Uh, SUSE used to have a, a Ceph-based storage product, but that product did uh, uh, is, is basically a, a package of the upstream Ceph distribution. Uh, with, 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 we, we realized that kind of storage product uh, simply was not easy to consume because it gives users too many um, uh, degree of, of flexibility when it comes to how to deploy and configure uh, uh, the, 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 the Ceph storage technology. Ceph storage technology is, is very good, but it needs to be more constrained. It needs to be more opinionated. And, and folks should, uh, uh, you know, people shouldn't have to deal with the basic Ceph concepts. Instead, uh, the storage admins should be able to specify exactly what they want as a storage and, uh, and, and then leave the basic, leave the detailed implementation to Ceph to provide an enterprise grade reliable uh, uh, storage appliance. So uh, Aquarium is a software based storage appliance uh, implemented using Ceph technology. So here I quickly have gone through uh, uh, many of these open source projects that uh, we, 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 we started and uh, we ran at SUSE where uh, these projects have uh, cleared reasonably. Uh, they've done, gone through enough internal vesting. So they, I think all of them are, uh, are publicly accessible now. I encourage all of you based on your 
own personal interest to go on to the SUSE projects at github.io, which then contains links to all of these projects. They're all public. Please take a look, uh, uh, download them, look at the source code. Let, let us know what you think. We'd love to work with you as we continue to, uh, to, to improve these projects. Hopefully one day you'll be either become a contributor or a user and you'll, you'll, you'll be able to join the, the community of these projects, just like uh, uh, how you've engaged with OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE is a great community. And now we're gonna, of course, all of these projects can work. They work with OpenSUSE and, um, and they strengthen the OpenSUSE community. And I fully anticipate you know, they also bring in new community members, and I expect there's going to be a lot of cross pollination between OpenSUSE community and all of these Kubernetes uh, community and all these uh, open source um, project communities. Really look forward to uh, either continue to work with you or start a new working relationship with you in the context of, of those projects. So thank you very much. Thanks for attending my call, and uh, have a great. Have a, have a great afternoon, have a great day. Thank you, bye-bye.